Modern fandom has turned lowered expectations into a true art form since the dawn of the 21st century. For the past 20 years, the internet's gift of giving everyone a voice seems to only have succeeded in giving fanboys a platform to apologize and make excuses for corporate interests in ways never thought possible. Rather than wield the considerable power of a unified global voice of millions to compel real change out of our corporate overlords, and and improve the quality of products and services, fandom more often uses this system to hype for, shill for, and defend these companies, while also making considerable efforts to suppress dissenting opinions. What has me stymied is how determined some pop culture consumers are to being the winner in the race to the bottom. It's no longer about the quality of the products offered. It's about what logo is on the package and who can claim to have the most toys versus everyone else in the community. This this, of course, plays right into the hands of these companies, who have increased their spate of exclusives and low production runs to create manic frenzy amongst their customers. For the buyer, getting the sold-out exclusive when so many couldn't gives them a sense of superiority. They believe they are fundamentally better than the other guy because they defeated the retail gauntlet these companies have created for their products since the advent of the internet. They are proud to be the most tenacious lab rats in this consumer consumerist maze. And there is one company where the consumer devotion is not only at this level, but the products themselves are well known to be defective on a regular basis, a situation that has not changed in over a decade. Despite knowing and acknowledging this reality, the fans of this company have accepted it as normal and keep paying into it. That company is NECA. Before we get started, let me just tell you that some collectors warned me that making this video would get me blocked on social media by NECA, as that's apparently how they operate. <laughs> <laughs> Founded in 1996, the New Jersey-based NECA, which stands for National Entertainment Collectibles Association, started making action figures in 2002, when it established a NECA Real Toys division. The company is owned by CEO Joel Weinshanker. <laughs> Weinshanker is also controlling owner of Elvis Presley's Graceland home, and he's a partner in Elvis Presley Enterprises. And since 2002, his company NECA has been in the action figure business for licenses that otherwise wouldn't get much attention, like classic horror films, the Alien and Predator franchises, Terminator, Rambo, The Golden Girls, and scores of others. Properties that traditionally don't get a lot of love on toy aisles by more mainstream stream toy makers. And they have alternate licenses for things like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Back to the Future, and others where they make a very specific scale or type of figure that falls outside the purview of other licensors. That's how they made my radar back in the day, when they acquired the rights to make the original comic book Ninja Turtles while Playmates was still making the mainstream toys. At the time, I don't recall hearing anything but immense praise for those figures. But soon afterward, when their figures from other licenses like Evil Dead and Gremlins started to show up on pegs at Toys R Us, the stories of NECA figures having notoriously brittle limbs and easily broken joints became all too common. His head doesn't want to turn, it feels like it's going to pop off or break off. The joints are stiff and gummy. The figure has no center of gravity and cannot hold its its accessories very well. I was collecting vintage toys at the time and didn't prioritize modern products, so the problems other people were having with NECA figures were literally not my problem. But about a decade later, I'm working on the Alien vs. Predator livestream, and I find out that NECA made some of the arcade game characters into toys, and that I could get them directly from NECA's eBay store for a good price. So so I did it. As usual for NECA, the sculpts are the best in the business outside of Hot Toys. The paintwork is tremendous. After the stream, I couldn't wait to get these guys out of the boxes and display them. But I remembered the warnings of many. Heat up all the joints on a NECA figure before moving them. The accessories for NECA figures are brittle, so don't torque them too much getting them into the hands. So you have to prepare for surgery with a brand new product just to get it display ready.
Good thing I had all the tools necessary for such an endeavor, being experienced in toy restoration. But within five minutes of having the warrior predator out of the box and getting him into a display position, and despite the use of heat on the joints, there it was. That stellar NECA reputation right on my doorstep. This is nuts. Fortunately for that figure, it had ended up with an experienced toy repair hobbyist. But even though I had the materials needed to fix it, I hadn't signed up for that experience with a new product, and I wasn't gleaning any enjoyment out of the challenge. When I posted photos of the situation, the messages started coming back how this is a very common problem with NECA products that has never been addressed in the many years the company has been in business. Furthermore, some people stated that some online retailers were so aware of the issue they wouldn't take back returns on broken NECA products. They'd sell them, but they applied a NECA-specific refund policy that didn't apply to other product brands because the number of broken NECA figures is too high to manage. You changed the samples, didn't you, huh? You switched the samples. And the clincher? I was told that NECA themselves shrugged off the complaints from customers, claiming their products were not meant to be played with, so if they break, that's on the buyer. That all sounds very convenient, until you actually reverse engineer the logic of their argument. I explained to you that there was the possibility you might have to take some kind of loss. Yeah. I think I want my money back. So a company that makes premium-priced action figures and invests loads of time into the sculpting and paintwork of each one, despite the joints engineered into the products for articulation and posing, despite the promotional photography NECA produces to showcase their figures in various dynamic poses, defines playing with a product as simply attempting to adjust the provided joints? This is thin, Riggs. This is very thin. Is that right? That's like buying a Ford Mustang and having the wheels come off on the first drive while on a perfectly paved road on a sunny day, only to be told by Ford Motor Company that you're the one at fault because the Mustang isn't designed to be an off-road vehicle and shouldn't be driven at all. Putting wheels on a chassis and selling it as a car is the same as putting joints into a sculpt and selling it as an action figure. I don't expect a sports car to handle off-roading, but that's not why I bought it. I do expect it to operate like a sports car under the proper road conditions, and I do expect those wheels not to fall off. Similarly, I don't expect a NECA figure to withstand the rigors of a toddler's playtime, but I do expect it to hold up to adult display handling, and I also expect those joints they purpose-built into it to operate without incident when new under reasonable conditions. At this point, NECA fans are probably screaming at me that these aren't meant to be played with. To that I say, moving a joint for a display pose isn't playing with a toy, it's adjusting a figure. And a buyer shouldn't need an entire arsenal of tools from the hardware store as contingencies every time a NECA product is purchased, especially not for the prices customers are paying. It staggers me what modern collectors are willing to put up with from NECA. Do a basic search on the internet for broken NECA figure and the results that come up in both images and videos are embarrassing. They've accepted these defects as part of something they've called the NECA collecting experience. And that's truly messed up mental gymnastics. <laughs> is with this guy? Who is he? It's like saying dying in a fireball in your Ford Pinto is just part of the Ford experience. Except we didn't do that. We demanded better and Ford was forced to do better. Some collectors have attempted to speculate the number of NECA toys that fail, and some estimates are as high as a third. But here's where it gets really weird. NECA defines itself as a wholesaler of non-durable goods. That's right. Non- Durable goods. For the curious, examples of non-durable goods include cosmetics, cleaning products, food, fuel, beer, cigarettes, paper products, rubber, textiles, clothing, and footwear. Meaning, anything with an expiration date or having a finite durability cycle. Specifically defined, non-durable goods are any consumer goods in an economy that are either consumed in one use or used up over a short period of time. 
considered by the United States Bureau of Economic Analysis to be within three years, and must be bought again in successive purchases. Now, before you scream and yell in defense of NECA that nothing lasts forever, including toys, let's look at the definition of durable goods. Durable goods are consumer products that are not consumed or that yield utility over long periods of time, considered to be over three years. Durable goods are also called hard goods or consumer durables. Examples of consumer durable goods include automobiles, books, home appliances, consumer electronics, furniture, tools, sports equipment, jewelry, medical equipment, firearms, and toys. That's right, folks. Companies like Hasbro and Mattel are selling their products in the same classification as home electronics and automobiles. NECA, on the other hand, sells its products in the same category as hemorrhoid cream. Hemorrhoids. They hurt, burn, and swell. So let's say for the sake of argument that NECA doesn't define its products as toys, thereby leaning on their definition as their excuse for ignoring the quality control issues with their products. That it's not just a clever name. <laughs> These aren't toys, so you shouldn't be playing with them. That includes taking them out of the box or attempting for display purposes to pose them in ways that NECA illustrated they can achieve in their promotional photography. What? Are you kidding me? NECA. If you aren't making toys, why are you engineering joints and calling these action figures on your website? If these aren't meant to be manipulated in even the most gingerly ways, why aren't you just making statues? Sculpting a 7-inch statue would be far less development intensive than an action figure, and you'd have far fewer customer complaints. But I'll tell you why they're not because NECA knows statues don't sell half as well as toys. I asked myself why NECA, since they know their figures coming out of the factory have a measurable fail rate, why they aren't making their figures more like pre-painted model kits. Send them with their arms and legs unassembled and let the buyer pop the head, arms, and legs into their sockets. Make each one a build-a-figure in a box to remove the problems they're having at the factory stage of assembly. But the answer is the same. Model kits and build-a-figure kits don't sell nearly as well as pre-built action figure toys. Which begs the question... Plastics. Why isn't NECA making their newest figures out of better plastic to prevent these issues that have plagued their products for almost 20 years? Walt, are your boys proud when they go out and sell this stuff? When they know the finish is gonna crack, the veneer split off, and the legs come loose? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, that's price merchandise. We're not cheating anyone. Ourselves. At that price, the customer knows exactly what he's going to get. This? Is it a profit issue? Do better plastics cost that much more that a customer won't shoulder the price increase? And what do you suppose the people think of us when they buy it? Are you all at NECA telling us you can't get the same plastics used by Hasbro and Mattel? And if NECA's apathy is not a profit-motivated decision, could it be that they just don't have the skills to solve the problem and they're hiding behind their non-durable goods designation and riding it out? What must they think of a management that's willing to stoop to selling this kind of junk in order to add a dime a year to the dividend? Maybe none of those rationales are the reason why. Maybe the reason is very simple. NECA is a company that claims not to make toys, even as they sell action figures. A company that proudly declares it sells non-durable goods, when toys are specifically categorized as durable in economic terms. It's a company that doesn't want you touching or using the products that they charge you money for. And they blame the customer when their product fail right out of the box. Sounds like you guys at NECA are just total assholes. And it appears many of NECA's devoted customers are already settled into this abusive relationship and accept these unnecessary and avoidable problems. Spank me! And spank me! And me! And me! Yes! Yes, you must give us all a good spanking! <laughs> With fanboys having collectively and effectively lowered expectations across the entire industry, why should NECA ever feel compelled to do better? Think about it. NECA has had over a decade of complaints. That's a decade of opportunity to improve the situation and do better. They haven't. And why? Because the majority of fanboys see those licensed logos and slap that cash on the barrel head for another hit. 
Is this a five o'clock free crack giveaway? Corporations never listen unless their profits are on fire. And NECA needs to learn just how non-durable their wallet can get. Because unlike companies such as Mattel and Hasbro that, for all their faults, define themselves properly as sellers of durable goods, NECA defines itself as a seller of non-durable goods. Products that are legally designated not to last. And let's not kid ourselves. NECA is not making food products or medicines. They are making action figures. And NECA has publicly admitted through the non-durable designation that they are junk. They're selling us trash. And they're not even trying to hide it.